Welcome to The Real Deal, where God and people are celebrated. I'm Rachel Inouye, bringing you encouragement through real life stories and a real God. Hey, let's get started. Okay, I am so excited for today because I have a very special guest on The Real Deal. I have a guest that I have wanted to just record an episode with for a very long time. She's been on the guest, she's been a guest on the podcast one more time when we did a kind of like a feedback, a talk back, a review when we did Heart Set Free. But this is my daughter who's going to join us today. And I just want you to know she is a lover of people. She is a lover of life. She's somebody that laughs often, makes things fun. She's a beautiful worship leader. She's a wonderfully um, intelligent and witty gal. But what I love the most about her is she is sensitive to the the kingdom of God. She's sensitive to spirits and who God is. And since she was little, she's blessed me and encouraged me in my faith. So I'm really honored to have her and I'm going to try and figure this all out, but I think I'm just going to bring her right in here. And so I want you to welcome Grace in a way, everybody. I'm just wanted to this. There she is. <laughs> Hi, Grace. Hi, mama. <laughs> welcome to the real deal. I just want you to know, um, that what I told people before I put you on the screen is really true. I honor you. I love you. I'm encouraged by you. I'm inspired by your life. The things you do always amaze me. I may fail to tell you how proud dad and I are of you all the time. I do my best to, but I just need you to know, I may forget to tell you every moment, but that's how I feel every moment. I'm so, so, so proud of you. I love you like crazy. Mm. Thanks for being. I love you. That's a good Thanks start. <clears throat> No, you are, you're quite amazing. And the gifts and callings of the Lord are irrevocable. Whatever he sends out, he does not, he never takes back. And I'm just watching the things that he put in you come into fruition in Mm -hmm. a new way. But I want to start the way I always do with everybody on the podcast, Grace. So I want to ask you some of these questions that I normally ask people. And I think you may have answered them one other time, but sometimes people are new to the podcast or new to, um, I'm going to say, each episode or each season. So let's just do these. Don't overthink these. Just give me these as fast as you can. Um, Would you say that you are rap fire? Would you say that you're coffee or tea? Coffee. Recently more of both, but coffee. That's Uh, true. Dog, cat, either, neither. Morning bird, night owl. Definitely a night owl. Okay. Books or movies? Movies. Although, but recently (laughs) I've been on an audio book binge as of the start of 2024 i've completed 55 audiobooks so it's just crazy you are gobbling them up okay silence or music uh you would think the opposite but silence yep would you consider yourself leaned in or laid back laid back okay and shower (laughs) or bath i don't disagree i'm just thinking uh both but shower for sure okay driver or passenger driver oh never passenger yeah i was gonna say if she's passenger i'm gonna be like well maybe when you're with a special person but otherwise definitely driver eat at home or dine out uh naturally i would say dine out i love going out to eat but recently in in more of the adulting stage of life i've been cooking from home so yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So <laughs> introvert or extrovert? <laughs> introvert, <laughs> which an, uh, would be another unpopular opinion, but it's true. Well, not unpopular in the fact that we would think you're lying is you have such trained extrovertedness that it's, it's yes. uh, definitely, that's a, it's that's like, the in best the way to put it. That's the best way to put it. I am a trained extrovert. I can exude so much energy when I'm around people, but then when I get home, I just crash because it's not my, it's not my charging space. Yeah. 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 I get it. I get it. Okay. So I have lots of questions I could ask you that come from some that I generate and then I never go here. I never stay on script. I just go somewhere else, but you have listened to the real deal before and you've been part of the real deal before, you know, the reason behind it, you know, just be the authentic you be the Real McCoy, grandpa would always say wood should be wood, leather is leather. You don't want fake things or mixed things either. You just really want the authentic 
uh, real person. So who is the real deal? And I know just in your life, you have multiple people, but right now who comes to your head? Who's the real deal and how has it affected your life? Oh, that's so easy. Um, first of all, I haven't actually been on the real deal before. We keep saying that, but I've only done the YouTube little recap. I've never actually been on the podcast. So this is my debut and I'm quite excited. About it. Okay. <laughs> Yay. But, yes, I do know the reason behind the RD and that is very yeah. important and special to everybody in our family, but um, easily hands down, uh, grandpa was the real deal to me and you and everybody else in our family. But the only other person that consistently has come to mind, uh, all the time in my life and throughout every experience that I've had is you. And that's, um, not staged, not scripted, not, um, baited or bribed. <laughs> that's just the truth. Um, even in the time that I was away <laughs> from my- she owes me two hundred dollars in Starbucks. Um, yeah, right. I'm just kidding. No, but uh, truthfully, and I can never say this without without crying. But you and Dad are my real dealers. Even in the time that I was away from family, uh, truth would just ring through my mind in a, in a space where I was either in darkness or loneliness or isolation. There would still be things mm-hmm. that you guys have said to me, even as a kid, that would just ring true. You know, um, as far as being authentic and. Um, that God loves me. And even in the times when I didn't think that he did, or I just didn't feel like I deserved it, or I didn't feel like I was practicing anything in my life that deserved God's love or was um, worthy of God's love. There were still things that just grounded me to truth. And um, that's just in our relationship, but in terms of being the real deal in life, there's just no match to uh, Rachel and Ed Hagen anyway. There's just none like you. And you're, You're yourself in every single space. And I think that's something that you just, you just don't find regularly with, with people. Like it's either like you go out in public and go to the grocery store and somebody just doesn't talk to people, but they're in a space where they talk to people. No, you talk to people all the time, (laughs) everywhere we go, no matter what, it doesn't matter if it's like, you're not really supposed to be talking as you're getting your seats in the theater, but you just do. And then you all of a sudden find out their cousins' names and how there's some sort of correlation, some sort, something that you have in common. It's just your superpower. And you have a, an ability to make people feel seen and heard and loved within seconds. And I think that's so cool. And what's the most special and important part of who you are to me is that that never changes. You as my mom and in our personal relationship are the exact same person that you are to anybody else and any stranger, any friend of yours, mm. um, you're, you're the exact same. And I think that's so important and hard to find. So you're my bestie. You're my bestie. No, I really <laughs> appreciate it. And I, I would say the same thing. Like I used to tell people that since you were young, you would make friends and, and kind of have an immediate connection with people. And I always knew that was the favor of God on you. And it hadn't always worked in our favor, if I think, you know, historically back at a bunch of things. But really, overall, it is your superpower. And there's a connection that you make right away. So I thank you for saying that because I admire it in you. And for you to say you see it in me is is delightful. I believe people pick up vibes, you know, like we send off vibrations. And I think people right. really do know whether you're for them or whether you're interested in them. So when I say something to people and I just talk to them, you know, even though they aren't expecting to be talked to, I think they feel seen, but I think they know I really mean it. Like, I think your nail color is really pretty. Tell me about it. Or tell me about your tattoo. Tell me whatever, whatever. And I think people know I'm genuinely interested. I'm not nosy. Maybe they kind of nosy, but I do know (laughs) that you and I went on a trip once and everywhere we went, whether we were going through the subway line or whatever, we felt a connection to the people and we tried to bless them. Yeah. And it wasn't a show. And part of me thought this would be so fun to have be like a YouTube thing or whatever. But then people Mm -hmm. begin to doubt those things, um, validity and authenticity. And if I want to be the real deal, I don't want somebody to think I'm just trying to be nice to Joe behind the counter. But you were, you knew because of all your restaurant experience, what they go through just to stand on their feet all day. And you yeah. would say something and we actually were a team because everywhere we went, we had a, a delightful <laughs> waitress or somebody that was at the gas station. And it's a superpower of yours too. Anyway, we could go on like that forever, but I want you to know that if you're willing, I would like to have you not just be a guest today, but maybe some intermittent times coming on the real deal. And we'll just do 
coffee conversations or I don't know what it could be called. But if you're willing to do that, I think people could benefit from just a mom and daughter chatting. I, you know, I, I don't know what you think on that, but are you willing? I think we, I think we are a shallow well when it comes to conversation. I don't think we could possibly come up with topics <laughs> or things to talk about. No, honestly, I think, um, I think people benefit in general from just authentic conversations. It doesn't have to be on a specific topic or on something that's like super prevalent in times. I think people, like you said, just enjoy seeing interaction. You and I yeah. uh, happen to happen to talk for hours upon hours every single day. So it's some of those things where sometimes yes. we're on the phone and we're like, we should have just been recording this. This was such a good conversation. Uh, so yes, the answer is yes. I would absolutely love to. Okay. Um, I think it would be super fun and special uh, and just special for us, you know, something that maybe yeah. my kids could watch someday because uh, it was special yeah. for me to even hear grandpa or people that you've interviewed. So mm. uh, yeah, yeah, I think it'd be really cool. Yeah. Well, that's really neat. Well, thank you. I will. I will definitely have you on. I want you to know the reason for you being here today is because number one, I've always wanted to do it, but I recently celebrated and you were sweet to celebrate with me the hundredth episode. And I had a jar and I had um, people fill in a jar or put their name in the jar. And we did giveaways throughout the time of the open house. And yeah. then I had one for topics and I had another one for suggested a person that you think should be on the real deal. And I said, if I'm not going to know them, then put your name down so they could be the connector, you know, for me right. to get a hold of the person. And I typically don't interview people I don't already know, but there are mm -hmm. people when I've said, when I've interviewed them, I say, who's your real deal? And if they told me this person was authentic to who they are, then I, you know, I want to expand my borders, so to speak. But your name cool. came up in the jar a couple of times. And I thought, yeah, people need to hear from Grace. You know, we were waiting on conversations with you for quite a while, but it's not that you didn't have conversations. You just had them in Michigan and you weren't able to do them, you know, broadcast before. But I do want to ask you, what do you remember about conversations up in our loft? I remember you growing. So you would sit in the chair and your legs would just be like, you would be like dangle over the side. Apple yeah. sauce. And then you would start yeah. to dangle and then they would really dangle. And you are a hair flipper. You guys, just so you know, Grace is a hair flipper. So she flips her hair and then she flips it back and then she's reading through a menu and she flips it to get out of the way. And then she flips it back. I always wonder which side your hair parts on. I think it parts in the middle. It does all sides. But yeah. You flip. Yeah. But you yeah. would sit and then you'd pull the hair. And Melanie, one of my mentees, would do this too. And she would just drop it on the floor. And I'd be like, oh, this is so fun. It feels like Grace. But you, you you freely shared things with me most of your life. I think, I mean, you just would talk openly. What do you remember about those? And was there ever a shift? Obviously we know, and we're going to probably share a little bit more about it for sure in our book, but there was a season where I didn't see you for eight years, but what was it like maybe before the fl fluid conversation and during the years of absence, what was it like to not talk to each other? I don't even know my answer to this question. Oh, you, you would say what it was like for you. Oh man. Uh, first of all, growing up, those were some of obviously my favorite times. And I think yours too. Uh, we've always just had such a unique relationship as mother daughter. And mm -hmm. I think when I was younger, you probably, cause you're just more mature and, uh, you were older at the time, but I think for both of us, we almost could see that eventually we would get to the point where we could just be really good friends and not necessarily a complete hierarchy of mother versus daughter. And I think it's just been so cool, especially after the time away. It's so cool to see how God has not just caused that to be true, but exceedingly more than I could ever have hoped or imagined. And we relate to each other on a way or on a, on a, level that I've never experienced with anyone else. And I've never experienced with any of my other friends. We kind of are in each other's brains and it's like, yeah. we don't really need, it's not like you complete my sentences, but you kind of complete my sentences. And we already know what train we're going on when we start thinking something. And so you're already, you're like, I know where you're going with this, but we still have a lot of those conversations. So as a kid, it was just really important to me and I didn't have sisters. Uh, and mm -hmm. I have an amazing relationship with my daddy, but he's not, as conversationally uh mm -hmm. he doesn't desire as much conversation as you and i do yeah. and so we relate together on that and so growing up i just remember feeling so comfortable with you feeling so thankful that we had the relationship that we did that we could talk about the mm -hmm. topics that we did um 
I was very, very open with you with everything that was going on in my life, whether it was boys or friends or dance and music or hopes and dreams or aspirations. I think I told you when I was six who I was planning on marrying. So, I mean, <laughs> we, we had all those conversations for the record that didn't pan out, but um, yeah, it's just, it's always been that way. And in the time yeah. away, you and I have talked about this so many times, but in the time of way, it's, it's mind boggling for me to look back and think about the fact that I didn't have you and I didn't, I had nobody. I had nobody that I could pick up the phone and call and just talk through things that were going on in my life or just, Hey, something really excited to happen, to, happen to me. And I just want to talk, talk to somebody about it or share in the mm -hmm. excitement or the joy or anything. I had nobody. And so me being such a person that's geared for that, it just feels like, how is that even possible? You know, how, even, even just without key relationships like you in my life, how did I not fill that void? And I think mm. honestly, this is just coming to me now, but I think honestly, God kind of preserved that space in my life that you had. And God mm. kind of preserved that, um, not that he intentionally left a hole in my heart, but it was almost this thing that I've always ached for and I've always longed for. And when I would think mm. about you during the time away, it was like, nobody's ever going to be that for me. You know, nobody's ever going to be how my mom and I were and how, how close my mom and I were. And I was almost fine with that. It was almost like, why try then, you know? And so now in being back, like I said, it's not just back how it was, but it's even different and more level playing field than I could have ever imagined. Yeah. And there, there hasn't been any, um, any conversations or any times that you and I have connected where we're like, yeah, we just do not see eye to eye on that. Or we really disagree, or we are coming from two totally different perspectives on a certain issue. We're so aligned still, which you wouldn't think when there's been a eight year gap of somebody's whole adult, you know, know, from, from 18 to 20, from 18 to 25, when all of my thought processes or beliefs or morals or values mm -hmm. could have been completely shifted. You know, I'm sure from your perspective, you're like, yeah, she's still my kid in a lot of different ways. And that yeah. could have been a lot different. And so I'm, I'm so thankful for that for sure. Yeah, me too. I mean, we could have come out on the other side and been strangers, like, Mm -hmm. we don't even know where to start. And I felt mm -hmm. like there was, <clears throat> so I, I wrote a line on a paper and I put, uh, so a line segment, a line goes on forever, but I put a dot and then on the other side, and then I folded the paper like accordion pleats for blinds, you know, yeah. and the dots are yeah. really close together. But if you pull the paper out, they're far apart. And I feel like God yeah. did that where he bent and accordion pleated the years to where it felt like whoop, we just jumped over one little tiny dot and we just started right back. Because people have asked me so much, like, what was it like? And I did <clears throat> want to be sensitive to you. And I said things like, I would love to get to know you again. And, and I meant it. Like, could you tell me who you are and what you're yeah. like? And what you've been through. And I also, I feel like I gave you, I can't remember the word, but something like if I'm touching on something or if I'm too invasive, cause I'm a questioner and I didn't even know that Andrew goes like, mom, you go deep so fast. Well, Aunt Joyce is an investigative conversationalist is what her daughter-in-law told her. <laughs> she, does, she, just, she goes in there and she gets there and I'm like, I haven't found out anything about Joyce. She'll just ask me, ask me, ask me. And I didn't want to go beyond what you felt comfortable with. But I think I said, like, if I'm saying something and you want to declare, was it bananas? bananas. <laughs> Not a topic for conversation. Bananas. <laughs> yeah, the bananas. But we really talk about everything. We talk about the most shallow stuff. I mean, Grace, I need to figure out how to do my eyeshadow to should I do my hair, you know, to put stripes through my hair to undergarments and clothing to like our bodies and cravings and what we eat to best the movies that we're watching, the books that we're reading the way God spoke to us when we were listening to daily audio Bible, like we will just go anywhere. And I feel like it's a blessing. Be and this is just a tip for people. If you're not willing to talk about nothing with people, they don't really want you to talk about deep things either. There's sort of for like sure. a trustedness that happens with the shallow end, you know, and with for buddy sure. time with Gail, you know, we talk about how Gail will scuba dive so fast and she will, but she's willing to do this a little bit too, you know, and you there's trust maybe developed there? I don't know. But I hope I haven't asked you post-reconciliation too many invasive things, but you've said 
that it's felt, you know, you've told me that oh, it feels it's, safe. It's, so that's, that's good. it's been, it's been so good. And I think it could have been different. And maybe if we didn't have the relationship that we did beforehand, it probably would have been a lot different. Uh, but in coming back, it just wasn't even a, it wasn't even a question for me. It wasn't like my mom doesn't really know who I am still or, or who I am now. And she missed so much of my life. It was almost like we were still living life together, just having different experiences. That's how it feels. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Uh, but it yeah, could totally feel like we were living. Back. Yeah. But not just, not just in terms of like the direction that we were going, but it literally feels like in coming back, that we were still involved in each other's lives almost mm -hmm. mentally. Mm -hmm. That's how it feels. We were still involved yeah. in each other's lives, even though we were having separate experiences. And so now we'll show pictures from over the years. And it's like, yeah, she wasn't there. Yeah. She, she didn't come to that or whatever it is, but it doesn't feel like you totally missed out on my life, at least for me. Um, yeah. And obviously there's, there's bigger things. I think on your side of things, there's bigger things family wise and friends and things like that. Weddings and, funerals and a bunch of different things that I missed that are huge, you know, that are big things. And I can't, I can't change that or fix that going back now. But, uh, my point is, is that in coming back in, in reconciling, I never felt like there's, there was this period where you just had to get to know me again. I'm still the same person, no. but here's the experiences that I experienced. Yeah. And that's really the only thing that you needed to get to know. Yeah. And I never, I never questions for a second, like, is my mom prodding or pushing, to get something out of me or to learn something out of me or to know something out about, about me or like, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Like you never, the real nitty -gritty. <laughs> <laughs> you never made me feel like that. It was truly like, I know my mom loves me. And if she's asking something or if she's curious about something, it's cause she loves me and she wants to know more about me mm -hmm. cause she truly, she truly roots for me. And that's a completely different feeling. And you can feel the difference. I actually kind of yeah. touched on this or wrote this in a chapter on the book. You can feel the difference when somebody is asking about you and you know that they're for you and, and they're not just wanting to know some dirt on you or wanting to get up in yeah. your gossip or in your business. It's a big, it's a big difference and you can feel it when somebody's authentically caring about you genuinely and wanting to know about you because they root for you. Uh, so that's yeah. it's yeah, a big distinction. I, I think it's I think we should mention that we are still working and we are compiling things and chapters and you're writing and you guys, Grace is a good writer. I love your cadence. I love the fluid of your voice. I love the fact that you can paint a picture for us. And I think it's going to be, I hope that it just blessed people because the desire of my heart was to write something about God's goodness and faithfulness in the middle of the mess. You shouldn't only have it all up with red bow before you can testify that God is with you in the hard things. And so I wrote it then, but I also felt like I wasn't supposed to publish it and I felt held back. And I had a friend, Lisa Harding actually was working with editing. And she, every time she sat down, the Holy Spirit just stopped her almost like the rain the horse. And she said, I, if this were to make the situation any worse, I can't do this. And so now mm -hmm. I think it's so precious of the Lord. We're going to probably write another one because the walking with grace may be different than the waiting on grace. But I, I do want people to know that the years that we were separate, God worked on us both collectively, but individually, because I think as connected as we are, I don't think it's healthy to be uh, enmeshed so much that people don't know who they are. And I think the years apart sure. made you even more you and me even more me. But we do yeah. reflect one another. We're mother, daughter. And I do love yeah. how intertwined we are. We're intertwined, but we're not so intertwined that there's a soul tie where I don't know where I end and you start, or you don't know where you start and I end, yeah. which may have been harder during those years where you're trying to become you, you know, and mm -hmm. you became you in a beautiful way. Um, yeah. But I, I love that you're writing. I love that you're adding things to the story, perspectives that I didn't know that were going on. And that's really why I wanted to ask you questions. And you were so good to share your photos with me. Like, I feel like one day when we reconnected, it was on the phone and I got like a, a photo dump and you were like, yeah. this is 2006. This is when I sang and I was in a parade and this was when it was cold out. And this is when I met Mag Magic Johnson. Yep. Is that magic? Yeah. And yeah. the funny thing is with iPhones, if you give me a picture, it'll go into my phone's library as if I were there oh, those yeah. years. 
which is yeah. kind of fun because if I look back now, I know those are years where I didn't see you, but you'll be in the mix of the pictures. Which That's is so kind of cool. cool. That's actually it's a good analogy. Like that. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, yeah, that is actually a good analogy because the same thing for me, you know, whether it was Hannah's wedding, I see you and dad by the tree at Hannah's wedding. And I was like, yeah, I wasn't there, but it's, it's, it's funny because it's now interlaced with my pictures from yes. 2017 or whatever that was. Yes. So that's cool. And you have one where you're licking an ice cream cone and it comes up <laughs> and I've used it in a reel of mine or whatever. But you said that literally was a birthday where you like went by yourself. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Got some birthday cake ice cream to celebrate me, me, and me. <laughs> Woo! I celebrate you. Just <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh. We can laugh about it now. It's yeah, really you know, pathetic, it's, it's, sweet. it's it's hilariously pathetic that we can, but we can laugh <laughs> about it now. But yeah, um, two things. I think one, when you say we resemble each other because we're mother and daughter, I think that's so fun and so true you met you know we can leave the names out but you met somebody very important to me and in the first five minutes of meeting you uh yeah <laughs> you're like so what do you think you know when you were thinking about meeting grace's mom or whatever he goes all i th can think is that i'm staring at an older version of grace like you guys act exactly the same you talk exactly the same you use expressions exactly the same way or or uh hand motions or whatever in the same way. It's like, I feel like I'm just looking at another grace, which is so cute because I had only been in touch with you for maybe six months or something. So it's not like yeah. we had spent all this time back with each other. It's just truly, I, I act like yeah. you because I, I've always copied you my whole life without even realizing it because we're related. But the second thing, which now I can't really remember, hmm, that's what happens when we talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay. That's okay. But yeah, it, I do believe that there, there are going to be similarities and that's the beautiful part. There are going to be differences that need to be um, welcome. And, and okay, so I just want to jump completely. And I want to tell you something that I really appreciate about who you are. And I think it's risky or maybe reckless to just tell people something you like about them that's just what they do because i think mm. people long to know who they are not just what they mm. do so cool. yeah you you know what i mean to separate that but i do want to talk a little bit about the gifting of stage presence and uh likability and favor that you have along with your voice because mm. i really pray that god would keep it that pure and that magnetic for people. And so the story goes, and I don't know if I've told this before, maybe it's been in a book, maybe I've told it from stage. I don't know. I just know that you were in a play, Candy Cane Lane, and you were, you can tell me how old you were, eight, 10, something like that. And dad and I were seated. And I believe the boys had to be with us. I know we have photos. So they, they were, and grandpa and grandma came, my mom and dad came from out of town and we're sitting in the pew in the chapel at Elmbrook church and we're watching and you know, you practiced your lines and everything. And I'm sure we knew about your outfit because we would have had to house it unless all the costumes were, maybe the costumes were kept at church and you guys wore them. I think the costumes anyway, were kept there. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cause you know, so-and-so could show up that day and not have their outfits, which makes sense. Right. But I believe they, they actually got them all from Fox River or something. It doesn't matter. But we just had this elaborate stage. We had this elaborate costuming and you come out in your little red dress with like the piping down at the bottom was fur and it was, it was candy cane and it was red and white. And you came out and you sang song and there was just sort of like this immediate, well, something's going on and everybody's mm -hmm. watching. So that's sort of, that's from God because not everybody comes out and feels that way. And there's not always this connection. And that's, that's a stamp of God in you. And so everybody's riveted. And then you start to sing and there was a poise and then there's the, the song and we were looking down the aisle and grandpa and grandma are looking down the aisle and dad and I are looking at each other like she can sing. And <laughs> you weren't nervous and you were like, like loved it. And so I just honor that part of the giftings God's given you. I don't say that. So you feel like all you can ever do is saying grace or I'd be disappointed if God puts you in another lane. Great. But it is a gifting that you have. And I just want you to speak to like how you feel when you sing or do, are you aware of it being that way? And, and now I've even seen you sing 
you know, even though I, I desired for you to lead worship because I watched you do that in high school and you just sort of brought people to the cross or you brought people to the, like, you guys, let's worship. And I watched mm -hmm. the anointing. The, the anointing breaks the yoke, it says. Without anointing, mm -hmm. we just get performance. And there's no, no so breaking true. that happens. Yeah. Uh, but with the anointing, it breaks the yoke. And so some people can be bound. And, and when you sing, it can be when you play, that God can use it. We know that David sat for Saul because Saul would be tormented by spirits. And when David would play the harp, it would go away. And so there's a beautiful thing that happens with music. And I don't need you to get too theological. I don't mean that. But what happens in you when you sing or when you lead worship mm -hmm. or when you just sing on your own? Just explain it to me a little bit. Oh boy. Well, first I have the picture. So if anybody is watching on YouTube, Oh, oh there's my camera. Oh there my gosh. There's Andrew, and Maddie. <laughs> yes. Andrew dad and my, my candy cane Jane outfit. Um, for, uh, well, first, thank you. That's such a sweet, sweet, sweet thing to say. Uh, I mean, it. music always been, music's always been such a, sounds so cliche, but such a safe space for me. Um, mm. I would come home even after whatever dance as a kid and sit down and play. I mean, obviously we had to practice yeah. for piano lessons at some point, but I, I, I would just sit down and play or if we were gearing up for some sort of a worship session, I would just love preparing for that. I loved collaborating with other people and having other people play with me and things like that. It's just really fun. It's just, there's something different about, you know, the, if you're picturing like everyone singing around a campfire, it's just, there's something different about music. Music just brings people together. And I've always loved that, mm. but there's, there's something so, so different now compared to when I would either lead worship uh, before or sing before there's just something shifted. God shifted something in mm. me during the years away where I felt so disconnected from myself in the sense of music, because I, I wasn't playing very often. I wasn't playing for anybody and it has nothing to do with performance. It just has to do with people knowing my passions and my giftings or my desires in music. Nobody really knew that. And so I had a couple different things and places where I got to sing and I got to perform. But like I said, something just really shifted during those years where I felt so far away from myself. And then when I started to sing more and play more, it became my, it became my therapy. You know, I didn't even have a piano for a long time uh, when I first moved away. And then I finally got a piano uh, and then it turned into uh, friends of mine gifted me a piano, uh, an 88 key legitimate keyboard piano for Christmas, which is just such a God thing like that, that yeah. they would, know, they that would know so me for life six again. months. Yeah. That they would know me for six so months. And not, not even know wow. how it, how important it was to me at that time. They barely even knew me, but they just knew that I loved singing, loved playing and didn't have a piano. So they're like, here's a piano. I mean, that's, that's hundreds mm. of dollars that they invested into me, which is just so sweet. Love you know, it. that's mom and Marcia, you know that. So, um, anyway, the more I played, it just became my therapy. I would come home after work, mm. uh, at the time before my uh, husband would come home and I wouldn't play with him in the house. It just felt like something that it's another indication that's interesting that I might need to go into in the book, but I never felt safe, uh, not for any particular reason, but I never felt safe playing when he was in the house. It felt really weird. It felt just, just, I just didn't like it. I don't know if it, I was nervous. I don't know if I didn't, I didn't know if he would like it. I, I don't know. I mean, he obviously heard me at some points in, in times. It's not like he never heard me, but I would not just sit down and play throughout the days or play throughout the nights mm. and have him in the house. I always played before he came home. So wow. that's interesting. Uh, and that's just a funny thing to think back about now. But when he would not be there, I would just unleash and just play and play and play. And God healed that for me. You know, he healed me from the inside out in knowing that, number one, I was made to do it. And that's why it felt so freeing. And two, whether it was worship music or not, it was my way of worshiping. And... Yeah, I started I started to feel a connection in that way, which is really special and important to me. And now that I found church and I've been able to lead from stage like I used to, that's just something that I never pictured myself doing again. I never thought that I would be on stage leading worship for people ever. Mm. And so to be back in in a, a green room space or 
with the worship team or in a prayer circle in church. It's just such a, such a thing where I, I look and I just sit and think, how good is God to bring me back here and have it not be something that's painful or um, brings back bad memories or feel feelings of me not belonging because of things that I've gone through. It's actually the complete opposite. It's like the things that I've gone through have just brought resilience rather than um, whatever, just a, a a feeling of not belonging or, or that I'm not supposed to be there or something like that. So, and, and like you said, in terms of, in terms of worship, there's something that I, there's something that I bring to the table. That's just very, very different now because of the things that I've gone through and because mm-hmm. of the, the pain points that I've been through. And I think I had a little fraction of that in middle school, high school and college when I was leading worship. And that's what, fueled me is because I wanted people to be comfortable. I wanted people to know like, yeah, God loves you. And all he wants is just for you to interact with him. And he wants you to just enter in his, in, into his throne room and, and understand his presence is worthy of worship. I had that, yeah. but now it's just so much. It's like somebody got steroids, you know, it's like, it's so much yeah. more powerful to where I can tell people, no, seriously, he loves you. It has nothing to do with what you've gone through. It doesn't have to do with who you thought you were to where you are now. There's no judgment. There's no condemnation. There's no shame. Like it's all paid for. He already knows about it. It's not like you stepping into church all of a sudden is like the curtain's been pulled away and everyone knows all your baggage now. Like he already knows. So why not be around people that can come around you and support you and love you? And then on top of that, be in a space where you can just lift your eyes up, you know, and, and focus on somebody that's worthy of worship because he paid the price for you. You know, you don't have to feel condemnation because it's, it's already paid for. That's, that's worthy of praise and that's worthy of worship and that's worthy of just all, all around adoration. And so that's what I now feel when I'm Mm -hmm. sitting down at the piano, as soon as I put my fingers on the keys, it's like, this is my way to tell God, thank you. You know, cause if you, you know, I, I use this analogy sometimes in other things, but like, you don't just put Michael Jordan on the bench, you know, <laughs> put him, in, put him on the court. Cause he's a good player. And so if somebody has a gifting, I don't care if it's with mechanics and they can work on cars, if it's, they're a really good painter, if they're a singer, whatever it is, do it for God's glory because he made you that way. And he made you good at something for a reason. Amen. And it doesn't have to be that you're, that you're a worship person to worship. You're worshiping through your cooking or your baking or your raising of your children. Like, I don't think there's any possible thing that you can do in life. That's more glorifying to God than raising children to be in a relationship with God. I don't think there's anything more powerful than that. And I just am obviously praying that I get to have that opportunity someday, but my, my abilities in music, I just know without a doubt that God gave them to me. So I might as well use them for him. Otherwise, yes. what's the point? You know, I, I, I could be singing a, an amazing Colby Calais song or an Adele song or, a you know, Sam Smith song. And those are all amazing people. Like I look up to them. Carrie Underwood, she's one of my favorite artists. I could be singing yeah. any of their songs, whether they're worship songs or not. But there is something that just shifts, you know, that the space mm-hmm. shifts, the energy shifts when you aren't just singing this way, but you're singing this way. And Amen. It's, Amen. It's, 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 it's vertical. vertical. It's vertical worship. You know, we talk about mm-hmm. that all the time. And so when I am singing That's something about, right. yeah, when I'm singing something about who God is and I know it because I've felt it and I've seen it and I'm living in it, there's something that's so different about that. And I was talking to my worship team this past weekend about it. Cause I got to sing on the worship team uh, yesterday and I was saying the same thing. I was like, people can feel the difference. It's palpable when you walk in the room and you can sense that somebody somebody feels the same way that you're feeling. And it, it doesn't have yes. to be this doomsday doomsday conversation like everyone has pain and everybody has problems and like, you know, life sucks. Like it doesn't always have to be that conversation, but it does need to be oh. like life isn't perfect and life is hard and there are struggles, but the struggles aren't against humans. The struggles aren't against flesh and blood. Here's the things that we can bring to to church and we can bring to our community of believers and we can bring it to each other and say like, our struggle isn't that and we can come around each other and love God and love, love who he is and who he's shown up himself to be in our lives. 
and we're late in that in that sense. And so yeah. I don't know. That's a really long way of saying that. Struggle. No, I love it. Right. It's profound. I love that you you were talking about how, you know, we can lose the people around us so that we can actually get <laughs> vertical because we're actually thanking the one that's you know the object of our worship. That is so profound. And the other the other part is that to use your giftings, no matter what it is. I love what you said because the mechanic does that under the Lord. Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all in, you know for the glory of God. Literally, you're alive for a reason when you're doing those things that make you feel alive that are not soul crushing, but life giving, that means that's part of how you're wired. And so you're able to bless others through what you've been, um, what's been invested and deposited into you. So I just love that. And it is so fun for me to watch you. I mean, I loved that yesterday, just tuning in to your church in Grand Rapids or in Lowell, Michigan and watching you do your thing. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's like watching Michael Jordan play basketball. You wouldn't want him sitting on the bench, right? Um, it, it's yeah. a beautiful thing. And, and yeah. And I think it's getting in touch with the God who made you, the God that's living inside of you. And it is okay to not be okay. I heard somebody say, it's okay to not be okay. It's not okay to stay that way. Like we don't want to just stay right. not okay forever. Right. But when you know, people are also, we're not okay means they are the prototype for how it can be better. And so you bump around with one another to make yourselves understand the victory, not the victim. You know what I'm saying? But you need to know that camaraderie. You need to know that acceptance. I love when you said you pull back the veil and God's already there. You know, he's there and he's um, working on your behalf. So he knows anyway. Why fake it? You know, that's, that's right. a really good thing. Let's pause a second. If you are enjoying The Real Deal with Rachel in a way, subscribe, rate, and review it. I appreciate your support. All right, back to The Real Deal. Really good. Yeah, and I think when I was when I was stepping back into the worship space, I think my, my biggest uh, roadblock or barrier or whatever, my biggest concern was that I didn't want to lead worship on stage and have it be about performance. I just, I just didn't want people to think that I was up there because I had something on them or I was better than they are or whatever it is. And when you're singing, playing, whatever it is, doing the drums, it doesn't matter what instrument or what, what form of worship you're doing. When you're thinking about who God is, the words that you're singing and what you're putting out, if you're thinking about those things and they have to do with him, it's not performance based. Right. And I've just seen I've just seen this shift in the way that I worship that, of course, I want to do a good job. I mean, I, I need to sure, have my sure. in-ears in so I'm not completely off pitch. But it's like I couldn't care less that there are people in front of me or there are people beside me or there's people listening to me sing. It's just not about that. And I thought that it was it was a mental thing where I wanted people to know that I wasn't doing it for for performance. But as soon as I sit down and as soon as I start singing the words, and if I'm yeah. actually focusing on what I'm saying, it takes the focus completely off that. And I think that's what they see. And that's the point where it becomes not about performance because they're actually seeing, okay, I don't think she's doing this for herself or anybody else, you know? Uh, yeah. And that's what's, that's what's the authentic response uh, is, is worship. And that's when you see people, I mean, of course, there's probably people that raise their hands just because they feel like they should be raising their hands. But there is something that's a more of a surrendering type posture where yep. you're just led to be like, this is who he is in my life, yep. you know, and yep. like more power to you, like be free in the worship space. Yes. I know you're yes. you're probably more free in terms of worship than I've ever experienced you in my life. But I'm like, go after it, you know, bring out the flags, yep. bring out the confetti, do yep. whatever you want to do, like be yep. free in the space because we only have one body. And so let's, let's use yeah. it for whatever, whatever comes to us, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I just, know. I tell people all the time, I say, you know, they'll say things like, well, that's just not me. And I, right. I'll say, okay, I believe it because within your own personality, you're who you are, but I see you at a Packer game. I see you when you get a strike right. in a bowling alley, like fully I demonstrate your your excitement, because then you're not saying, well, I'm just a stiff, you know, my, my German background makes me that, oh, no, I've seen you get excited about things. So like authentically, that's the real deal to me is be really who you are oh, true. and don't hold back because he's worthy of the worship, you know? And I also love what you said about like, 
You want to know that it is God working through you. You don't want to fall in either of the ditches. I think the ditches are <clears throat> false humility. Oh, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it was just God. And they're like, are you kidding me? You weren't that great. You know, you don't want to be like, because God had to use you. He had to use right. you to do it. And so it says in scripture that uh, God put Gideon on like a glove. It was like the spirit of God in Gideon, the spirit mm. of God in grace. And so you have to show up. False humility is like, no, no, thank you. Glory to God. It wasn't me. That's oh, one ditch. It. The other is like, it's all about me. Did you see me? Did you see me? I gave my sizable yeah. donation. You know how they said that in that one movie that we always laugh. Did you yeah. see me lead that? Did you see me lead that? Okay. Now that's going to crumble and fall because now you're the idol. Mm. Now you're the one trying to, and then they last for a little while, but it will crumble and it'll probably implode from the inside out. So you don't want the ditch wow. of it's all about you. You don't want the ditch that it's not about you because God used you, you know? So to keep that, uh, in the forefront of your brain and also in your spirit. Like I believe like yesterday, even when you were singing tremble, you know, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble and you silence fear and you're singing those things. Honestly, I believe a worshiper is prophesying. They are proclaiming mm. truth. And when it comes out like that, it's about somebody's next week. It's about somebody's 10 minutes from now. It's about something. And that comes out of you. And I think that's where the power is. And that's what I think people sense when they stop you sometimes and say, like, thank you for, you know, what you shared today, or are you, were you the one that's singing that, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm just always going to pray grace that that stays as pure in you, because that is when God will use it powerfully. He will use it mm. powerfully beyond you because it's like, mm. I can trust her. I can trust her to be a girl and I can trust her to um, break the yoke because then anointing she. She's going to use for my glory and knowing that she had to be used like that confidence mm. thing. So anyway, I can go on and on because that's a whole topic for me. But um, but yeah, that was one thing I wanted to talk to you about. And I don't know what else you want to cover. I want you on the real deal as a separate episode, separate from when we always have coffee conversations. But is there something you've thought about that if you were to tell people you want them to know X, Y, or Z, or is there something about you that people might be surprised and they would never have known that about you or I don't know. Whatever, whatever you want to share. Um, I don't know. I think, I think the only other thing I would say regarding the conversation that we were just talking about is, you know, when scripture says that we are God's workmanship and in scripture, he also, also talks about the, the potter forming yes. different things. Okay. That's just such, that's just such a great imagery for anybody mm -hmm. Because in terms of worship or in terms of life, the potter needed to make the bowl. The potter needed to make the cup. The potter needed to make the plate. The potter, like he made all of these different things for different purposes, right? And so if the bowl is thinking, well, I'm not a worship leader because I'm not the cup, I'm just not going to be used. It's like you're used for the soup and the cup's not going to be used for the soup. Like I'm giving t a terrible... Amen whatever but it's no. like if you're if you're not formed for worship or that's just not me or i just don't worship like that or i'm just not a good reader i don't really like reading the bible uh, it's or it's hard for me to read the bible there's so many different ways that you can worship god and there's so many different ways that you can show god gratitude for how he made you and just stop comparing yourself to well I, my voice Amen. isn't like hers or i don't pray like she does or he does or i'm Amen. not a I'm not a minister. You don't have to be a minister to minister. You know, you can minister right. at the gas pump. Like it, you right. are formed in the image of God. You are his clay. You are his workmanship. And he takes pride in workmanship, just like the potter does when he pulls off the bowl and is like, it's exactly how I wanted it to turn out. Like God looks right. at every single one of us and says, that is exactly how I wanted him to turn out. It's not like he's thinking, you know, but there's a couple imperfections on his face and sometimes he gets acne or sometimes she has, you know, gray hairs that sprouted when she was 19. I don't know where that's from. Yeah. The, like the, imp the imperfections are not imperfections. God created you that way for a reason and Amen. for a purpose. And it's, it's time for everybody, I think, especially in the younger generation to stop comparing everybody else to everybody else and stop comparing yourself to somebody across the way because I'm just not like they are because you're right. you and she she can't be me and I can't be her so stop trying to and understand that 
whether it's like I said, whether it's working on a car or brewing a, a thing of coffee because you work at the Starbucks or bagging groceries or pushing carts back into the into the uh, the grocery store, you can do it to glorify God and you can have a good uh, yeah. outlook on it and you can have a good perspective and that is worship. And that is adoration because you're saying, hey, God, whatever this time is while I'm pushing carts, if it's just a six month job, that's great. But I'm going to do it with a good attitude and I'm going to do it to the best of my abilities. And my boss is going to see that. He's going to see my attitude. He's going to appreciate whatever it is. And it matters. And so somebody could be seeing you just loving life while you're while you're brewing mm-hmm. your Starbucks and having a great attitude and be like, hey, here's my card. I'm a, you know, whatever. We really need somebody in our HR department that has a good attitude. And you've just shown yes. me a great attitude just by brewing. It doesn't matter. It could all be used. And I think in my life, that's one of the biggest things that I can preach on is that nothing's wasted. Right. And none of the circumstances, no matter what they were, or no matter what you look back on thinking like, I have no idea why I did that. Well, it's for a reason. And just watch how God uses it and watch how Things yeah. just come together in your life where you're like, you know, if I hadn't, if I hadn't learned how to use that Excel sheet, I wouldn't all of a sudden be able to do whatever, you know, my exactly. grandma really needed help with her taxes. And now I know how to use Excel. Like, you know, like, yeah. it, right. It can all be it, used, because he my plans point. in advance. So it's masterful that your masterpiece, but that he's planning certain things. And you don't, we don't even know how the dots are connected, but they're connected mm-hmm. and they're connected mm-hmm. to other people. Like on purpose so that whatever we're doing, you know, when you were saying like, whatever you do, just do it with all your might made me think of that gentleman that passed away at your church because he was a greeter and he would go out and greet people with gusto. Like this is my role and I'm going to worship God through it. And Grace, at first, the first time I ever saw you guys, we were in the church and I saw him come out with an umbrella to get her. And I'm like, I kind of used to this. I have a pretty daughter and people like bend her back <laughs> all the time. Everywhere I go, people are like, hi, hi. And they'll do all sorts of things for grace. So at first I kind of thought it was that. And then I watched him do it for everybody after you. Every girl. You know what I mean? And, and I watched him do it for me once when you were already there and I came in. It was like, I don't know. It was just a testimony that he lived his life on purpose and lived his life with joy, no matter what the task was before him. It was beautiful. It was really yeah, and good. he he never he never stood in the front of the church and looked nope. at us like I'm not on there up up there singing or up there playing like yep. he just yeah that's that's a great example and I guess that's that's what my, was my point because God doesn't just say like you you are my workmanship or you're created in the image of God just for nothing like it do, it's not supposed to land yep. on deaf ears he doesn't just say it right. just to say it like it's like no I made you nobody else can be you you can't be right. anybody else. And yeah. so just stepping into your identity is huge. You obviously are very passionate about that topic, but I think it's yes. just really important for, for the younger generation. And I, I think particularly women, because women are not only competing against other women, but they are in a space where they feel like they have to compete with men. And yeah. my personal belief is that's just not a thing. <laughs> men cannot yeah. do what women Ooh. can do and women cannot do what men can do. Like it, we we have strengths for a reason, you know, like yeah. we are supposed to birth the, birth the children and raise the families. And that's, that's beautiful. And we aren't mm-hmm. supposed to be chopping down the lumber. Like, you know, like that's, that's, that's a strength of a male. And there's just so many different it roles. Mean you can't and... do it, but it's not what you're, it doesn't mean you Correct. can't do it. It's not what Correct. you're built for. Right. You know and, what I'm saying? And, and that's cel- beautiful. Yeah, and, and celebrate the fact that somebody else is. Rather than yes. demeaning demeaning them or being like, well, don't talk down to me because I can do it. Well, sure, you can. You know, that's great. Yeah. And I could yeah. do things that you do. But, you know, if I'm not gifted at her, if I'm not, you know, designed that yeah. way, then that's fine. You know, that's totally fine. Yeah. But, you know, I one know. of the things that I think is once we get that honed in and once we figure it out in our own identity, our identity doesn't get stuck. It's more fluid because I am this person and God could put me in task A, B, or C, but I'll still be me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because one of the book launches, it might've been Lilypad's book. I had all of your aunts here and it was so fun for me to know. And even like your graduations and Andrew and Michael's graduation is so fun for me to know who I could put where you know, mm. and particularly graduations. I don't think it was for Lily Pad's launch, but my point is I put Aunt Joyce down 
in the front when people come in because she has no problem. I mean, she like was in her element. She welcomed them. She told them the rules. Please fill out your name tag. Please make sure you put in your name for the drawing. If you go upstairs, we would like you to have food in this place. And and she just was so good at it. So good. Sharon, Sharon would not want that. That's not right. her role. She would be like, I, right. I, she's super friendly. I'm not saying that she's not friendly. She just doesn't want to give the directions and be the person that's the teacher part, part right? And so right. like I had Joyce do that and I had Sharon look out. Like if you and Craig could make stuff and reef some play at this graduation, or if you knew that somebody needed this, not only background, but instrumental in the overall way it's going to run. Mm-hmm. Put her there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And she did it. You know what I'm saying? And Barb, would you just go grab the plates because, you know, because she will chat and do, but you know, what I, all I'm saying is it makes one little event run well. Well, think about if God wants to make the universe run well, everybody oh, just yeah. needs to do what they're gifted to do. And they're sometimes I think yeah. for, for you say for younger generation, I think I would say something to the younger generation and that would be, you are made and designed for a purpose, but sometimes you have to try some things that you're not good at for you to figure out like, oh, that's not my thing. That's sure. just as wonderful as it is for you to find your thing is to kind of know what you should not do and avoid or mm-hmm. give it to mm-hmm. somebody else who loves it. So anyway, yeah, you know, and I think the problem is even- we talk for eight hours and people may <laughs> not be used to it. Eight hour conversation. We'll have to have a, this yeah. is a coffee conversation that is marathon style going to be about 26 hours um, yeah <laughs> no no yeah no I I think that hits home for me I think that hits home for watching a lot of my friends go through things like that or even just myself in certain areas stepping into a space where I'm not in a normal job I can sit back and yeah. compete or compare compare with all my friends that are in a, in a different stage of life and it's like that's just so not so not worth my time so not worth my mental energy and if there's a space that I'm gifted in or, or designed to be doing right now, then why not do it? And why not take advantage of that and step into that? So I don't know. Yeah. You really uh, are at a stage where you're able to do some things that some of your friends that you grew up with that are either your age or a little older can't do right now because they're not in your circumstance and you can't run in their lane. You know what I mean? Because you don't have four mm-hmm. kids or you're not doing what, you know, and God has that purpose set and that timing. In his mm-hmm. in his hands, and he's good at it. But, you know, I would really love. It, we can talk about this now, or would you come another time and we just talk about like when you decided to leave, like what people would consider work. regular work, <laughs> and and talk about yeah. work that is not at nine to five and it isn't punch the clock and it isn't necessarily the norm, but the things that you've chosen to do. I mean, we can talk about it now if you want, or would you talk about that in the future? Because there's some uncertainty in it, and there's some certainty that God's going to provide. And so I don't know. What are your thoughts? I, th- I think, I think we share about that more in depth in another time okay. because when she, when she starts recording, she goes, should we set a timer? I'm like, <laughs> you think? <laughs> we're, no, we're, we're going to need, a timer. need well, a timer. There's a clock. Thankfully that's ticking there's and showing clock. us how long we've been recording. But yeah, just to, just to say before we have another episode that talks about provision or, just watching God do things that you don't have to think through. I think that's, that's just such a good topic because there's so many different instances in my life. And even currently, like I, I could be sitting here right now. It's, it's a Monday at two thirty Michigan time. And I could be like, I'm not at work. I don't have any plans for tomorrow. I don't have any plans for Wednesday. I am just sitting here. I have no idea how I'm going to be making money or I'm not in a s- typical job. I could be sitting here and panicking about it. And frankly, I'm not perfect. In some weeks I do, but I've witnessed it. I've w- witnessed yeah. Yeah. being in a stage Which of like, voice? I don't, I don't know how this is going to happen. And it just, it just happens and God figures it out. And it's probably going to be different than what you thought was going to happen. And mm-hmm. that's, that's just what I've seen in my life. And so I'm in a huge stage of trusting in his provision and I'm just living life. I'm not shying away from having different experiences or different, um, different things that I'm doing, you know, whether it's travel or otherwise, because it's, 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 I'm also in the stage of life where I am free to do so. And so I feel this sense of, uh, 
feeling comfortable in knowing that I should go take trips and I should go travel with you to Florida or go home or do things that yep. I wouldn't normally have the flexibility to do, or someday I might not have the flexibility to do. And so taking advantage of those things, even though things cost money, uh, but I believe that God's God's got it and he's going to help me figure out day by day what those things look like. And it's just been exciting to see, you know, it's been so... He's redeeming that though, because there's so many things you didn't get to do for a number of years that oh, he's yeah. providing an opportunity for you to reclaim those actually. Oh yeah. And redeem oh, the yeah. Time. My, my life is so different than what it used to be. Nothing. Like nothing, nothing about my day-to-day -day routine is anything comparable to what I was doing. Not a sh aside of the fact that I eat and I sleep and I drink water. I, I nothing about <laughs> when I wake up and think about what's what's on the docket today. There is not a single thing that's the same. And it's been really fun. Even a guy on the worship team before we close, a guy on the worship team yesterday said, "I just feel like I want to talk to you forever because uh -huh. you're just Me so too. interesting." And I'm like, "I'm interesting." He goes, "I feel like you've lived multiple lifetimes in 28 years." And I told him, I, I said, I'm, it's not about like a bragging or I've done things, but that's just true. Like I have done so many different things in my lifetime that a lot of people haven't. And I've seen a lot of things that a lot of people haven't. And I've been a lot of places that a lot of people in a lot of really cool ways, they don't get an opportunity to do. And so I'm thankful for those things. But at the same sure. time, comparing what I was doing for a certain amount of time to what I'm doing now, it's, it's so different. It's so different. It's so different. And, I just I'm saw so, a picture I, like, of I'm a so wheel. excited about it. Yeah. I just saw a picture of a wheel, Grace, when you were talking about that. Like, why would God give you all of those experiences? Why would you have had so many different things? In some ways, your life is so different because it was more routine and there was particular things you had to do. But within mm. the what you had to do in the last decade, you learned a lot of different things too. And so the wheel is who you are. <clears throat> the spokes off the wheel are all the different things that you have. Yeah. And then the fire is like all the people that those things could touch because you can say, oh yeah, me too. Or, oh, I know a little bit about that. Or, well, yeah. I have to tell you this, this was one of my favorite times because I was able to do this or, you know what, this was a difficult thing, but I little know about, it's almost like God gave you like an octopus arms. I'm changing my metaphor now, but to reach out and touch so that this guy says, I can talk to you forever because it's like, Oh, she gets me whatever, or she had experiences we can talk about. And I see that yeah. as you are the hub, that's still you. All the experiences come out to touch other people, to relate to yeah. other people when the rubber meets the, meets the road kind of thing, you know, of life. So that's kind of an interesting thing for anybody that's listening. What's happened to you? Where have you been? What are your experiences? What are the things you've done and why? Yeah, and, and trust that you you're going to figure it out now, at some point. Yeah. You have something now that can relate and maybe speak to other people or encourage other people, or even as you just look at life, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It it seemed to strike me as a really, really wonderful way that God gives us the wealth of who we are and what he's invested in us and what he's let us go through and allowed us to experience. He's allowed us to have and all that stuff too. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It is pretty cool. Or even things that, you know, I, I, I might not necessarily have been really interested in, but I was still exposed to or still saw. So I have sure. insight into it. You know, I might not use it in my future, but I have a little insight into it. So it's just, it's just different. Cause all those, all those guys and all the people on the team were to have totally different lives, you know, but one guy was talking about sure. running a business. Well, no, I know a little bit about that. One guy was yeah. talking about uh, going through a divorce. Well, I know a little bit about that. One guy was talking about yep. weight loss and fitness. Well, I know a little bit. About that. <laughs> and then we were all in music. And so they're all like, eh, you have like literal experience in everything that we're talking about. And yeah, it's just been funny, funny to, to kind of see how my short span of life has been just so rich and, in so many it has. ways that, yeah, that are funny, but. And part of it is because you do love people. Like you said, you might be an introvert, but you are a trained extrovert. I, I said those phrases, but because you do, you'll meet other people. And so then you share an experience with them now. You know what I mean? It's maybe even if it For wasn't sure. your own personal experience, now you share an experience. And so you have a little bit to talk about. I mean, you have a couple of clients or a couple of 
customers and regulars that came in that were older gentlemen and like grandpa's age, you know what I mean? And yeah. you're able to do that probably because of being, you know, a granddaughter, but also like, you know what, I can learn something from these people and I can go have breakfast with oh, them yeah. and their wives and hang out, you know? Um, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a beautiful thing to be open. I actually think every day is planned and every day is appointed by God. And so what is the takeaway? What is the learning? What is the giving that we can do in any day? Like it isn't random who you meet at the, oh, at the sure. doctor's office when you're standing there. Like God knows what that is. So yeah, I really would love to talk to you also. Let's maybe we should keep a list after this. We'll stay on it. Keep a list because even when you talked about body and weight loss and, and fitness and whatever, there's some things about that that we could talk about. I really feel like I had to repent and ask God to forgive me for kind of like being mad at my own body right now or being, you, you know what I mean? Like, totally. like it's a gift. Yeah. It's a gift. I was going to say that. I was going to say that's another, yeah, that's another topic I was going to say is we need to write that down for another podcast. Cause you and I are in, and I was thinking about this in the very beginning of this episode is that you and I were talking about all the different things that we can talk about. And I was like, I have such a special, special relationship with my mother where we can talk about body image and we can talk about weight and fitness and exercise and health and food and, and have a healthy conversation about it. Not a conversation where yeah. it's, you know, comparing or, or judging or yeah. anything like that, but be like, if, you know, holding each other accountable if we have goals, yeah. but also yep. giving each other grace and kindness in saying, Hey, you know, you're focusing a little bit too much on this and like, give it up to yep. God because he's got it and you're yep. beautiful and whatever it is, there's, there's a lot of those different things. And I don't think a lot of people have that relationship with their mom, which is very special for me, mm. but mm. find somebody, you know, kind of find somebody in your yep. life that can be that voice to you and say, Hey, let it go. <laughs> or, Hey, you know, I really want to yeah. encourage you that with that, like, let's go to the gym, you know, cause it's not bad to have goals and it's not, not bad to want to have things that we want to, um, what's the word we want to get better at, you Achieve. know, improve, mm -hmm. improve on, like, obviously people should want to improve day by day and take care of their body. Cause you only get one, sure. you know, but, uh, having a space of kindness throughout those times, yes. where, yeah. you know, yes. Yeah. That's a topic for another time. Well, Chris, I could talk to you forever. Well, we do. You, you guys, just so you know, all of you out there, you real deal. Uh, you might be listening to the real deal. And we were probably having a conversation as you listen to the real deal. And it's on the phone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're just being together and getting some things accomplished at grocery stores and, and in places. And, and it's really shown me that that's really what being with the spirit of God is like. He's always mm -hmm. there. You can talk to him. You and I can be like, hey, mommy's still there. Hey, Grace, are you still there? And he goes <laughs> with us everywhere. You never get away from him. How do you get away from the one you contain? He's in the garden with you. Like, there's never a chance to not be with the one that indwells you. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. the relationship and how we've been hanging out together has been super beautiful. And I love it. But it's an example to me of how we are with God. We house Yahweh. I like get like, what? We have the spirit of God inside of us. And so I don't know. I could talk to you for hours. Is there anything else you want to cover? Or do you think you, you want to pray for the people real quick? I want to pray for you. And then I'll close with grandpa's prayer. But um, mm. what's on your heart? What's what's on your thought process? You, you want to pray or no? Or what you think? Nothing, nothing really. Yeah, I can pray to close and then you can close, close. But um, yeah, I'm just excited. Thank you for, for doing what, it. Yeah, I'm just excited for what these conversations will end up being. Not that it's, you know it's not about our conversations. It's about what our conversations could give to somebody else or somebody that might need sure. to hear certain things today. And, um, I just love talking to you regardless, but like you, you said, do. it's, it's, that. it's so special to have a relationship that we have, and then also have a platform to share certain things to maybe encourage other people. And like you said, it's like, we're, you know, as far as the relationship with the Holy spirit and, and him always being there, that's exactly how, our relationship feels, you know, I always know that I can pick yeah. up the phone and call you or talk to you about something, which yeah. is just so special. You have a different mind because you're a different person, but you yep. also know me, you know me and you, yep. you think the same, same way that you. I think. And so same way, same way with you. And so it's kind of fun to be able to, like I've told you, I'm like, thanks for the positive reinforcement, you know, cause it's like, I, I knew what I thought and I knew what I wanted to, to say or wanted to be talking about, but you just, you back me up and it's always good to have somebody that's, that's backing me up and yeah. that's how God is, you know? Yeah. Everybody welcome to two verbal processors. That's what this part of the podcast, two verbal processors. You know, some people are internal processors and that's great. 
But everything yeah. in my head can't just keep pinging around because I'm not an internal processor. So when I talk to you about yeah. things and I use my <laughs> words, then sweet dad doesn't have to listen to me use all my words, you know, yeah. and you can talk to me. And at the end, you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of think this or and I love it. I don't ever think like, when is she done talking? Because we're verbal processors no. and it's how yeah. it's how late. We, and I we also get just it. want to mention to anybody, to anybody, if Grace and I can have conversations that bless you, yay. But when she was talking about not comparing yourself to anybody, I don't want you to compare our relationship to yours with a spouse or a daughter or a mother. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's about. But if there's things that would encourage you and you just see that you're going to relate a certain way and you just do you, that's what we want. That That's what we want it to be is just things that our conversations can spur on in you. And if there's helpful things, of course, I glean things from other people all the time. It's one of the reasons why I'm always listening and watching and, you know, being uh, led. You're being led mm -hmm. by certain influences. But if we can influence you in any positivity way, <laughs> we're all for that, for sure. Yeah, like so, I okay. said, you know, it's so, so great. <laughs> I love, I love you. Like, I, like I said, it's good to have a relationship that I have, like with my mom. But it doesn't have to be your mom. You know, it doesn't have to be your daughter. Just sure. find somebody that find somebody that gets you, that roots for you, that encourages you, that keeps you accountable, keeps you kind, gives you grace, gives you encouragement. Whatever it is, whatever mm -hmm. language that you, whatever language that you speak or that you need, find somebody that can give that to you. And it doesn't have to be your spouse. Obviously, that would be great, but your spouse, your significant other, but, you know, somebody that can speak into your life and understand where you're coming from in your thought process and, and validate you mm -hmm. in that way. Uh, that's really important because otherwise it's hard to, uh, it's hard to, like you said, ping pong in your own brain, thinking like mm -hmm. all these different things and not, not having somebody be like, this is the truth or this is yes, or this is right, or this is not right, or whatever it is. If you don't have somebody like that in your life, it's it can get difficult. So I'm just so glad that I have you back in I'm my so life. Glad I have you. Me. Yeah, I'm so, so glad I have you. And and I and I would also say that um it's it's so important to have it, but if you don't have people that can root for you when it's hard, and if you don't have people that root for you in your wins, they're not really for you. When people mm -hmm. can't champion someone when they're succeeding and doing well and expanding, they're not really for you. They may say they are. I'm okay. just going to be honest. Like, steer away, steer away, mm -hmm. keep them as friends, you have to cut it off, but they are not your people. People who love you, who get you, want to champion you as well. And they don't for sure. hate when you succeed. When you rise, my dad used to say, People champion, you know, the underdog, right? They champion them. But then somebody gets to a certain level and somebody wants to cut them off at the knees, he'd say, and, and them make off. them small again. And I think they want to oh, make so them small true. again so that they can feel big. And that's not somebody who really champions you. You know, it just really isn't. Mm -hmm. So pray through that. There's some discernment in there. So that might be a different topic, but I just oh. felt it in my spirit that people need to be that's aware. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal. A and one. Yeah, I just feel it. Some people may need to like not cut off, but distance themselves if somebody can't champion you and watch you succeed and bless you. Or check, and or want yeah, or or on the receiving on the on the receiving side, check your heart. Check your heart whether you can celebrate other people and whether you can encourage them and cheer for them and not feel a sense of competition or not feel a sense yeah. of coveting or envy or jealousy it's like no <laughs> they should be them and you should be you and it goes both ways and if if somebody feels your champion spirit for them they want to do the same for you you know but if they're yeah. like every time i every time i pick up the phone she gets all salty with me when i tell her something huge yeah. that happened for me well i don't really want to call her next time right you know? so wh who wants right. that so check your check your heart too on how you respond to other people Amen, Grace. That's so good. That's so good. All right, you pray, and then I'll I'll close this out. I love you. <laughs> Don't worry, we're gonna get on the phone right after this and talk for a few hours. <laughs> it's so true. This conversation's not my, over. I put my earbuds on and go for a walk, and then it'll be like, okay, well, yeah. Me too. We're I gonna spend to the rest of the afternoon. When we're done. I do have Hell to yeah. let Dad okay. know. <laughs> Okay, Lord, let us pray. Okay. Yes. Oh, God, it's so funny. So funny.
Anyway. Thanks, God. God, thank you. Thank you for uh, just the ability to have a platform where we have computers and internet that um, we can get a link and communicate with somebody that's in a different yeah. state. It's just, it's interesting as much as technology is a huge downside and a downfall in our uh, culture right now. It's also something that can bring people together and can bring mm -hmm. unity. And I just thank you for the time that I have with my mom being able to be in the state of Michigan and she's in Wisconsin and we just have such a close knit connected relationship. And I just, I pray that that would uh, resonate in people with their relationship with you, um, whether they're close in proximity or they feel like they're close in proximity, that it just doesn't matter. Time and space and language and culture, none of that matters uh, in our relationship with you, God. So I thank you that you see us and that you hear us no matter what platform we're using and no matter what we're doing in our day, we can just talk to you throughout it. And, um, the communication line is always open. There's never a time that we're bothering you. There's never a time that you're uh, doing yeah. things that are a little little bit bigger than our problems. So it's just not worth uh, lifting up. But I just pray that we would feel the open sense of communication and have a <clears throat> have a good, healthy relationship with you because that's what you desire because you made us. And I just yeah. pray for every listener today, um, whatever they're going through. I have absolutely no idea if it's going to be listened to in the next months or if it's going to be listened to in three years from now. But I pray that they would just mm -hmm. feel an overwhelming, insurmountable amount of love from you because yeah. you made them. And on the note of you are the creator and you've created each and every one of us differently and for different purposes. And I pray that we would just step into that, uh, knowing that whatever it is that we're doing in our life, we can do it to the glory of God and we can lift up our jobs and we can lift up our families and the way that we go through our days to you and say, whatever you want to use from this God, whoever I'm supposed to encounter, whoever I'm supposed to meet, if I'm supposed to pick up the phone and cold call somebody for insurance, I pray that I would do it with love and kindness, <laughs> whatever it is, God, that you would just use us um, for your ultimate glory. And so I thank you for my mom's podcast. I thank you for the, uh, the amount of people that she's been able to bring onto this platform and the encouraging stories that they've been able to share. Uh, I thank yeah. you for placing this on her heart. I thank you for creating her the way that you did. She's absolutely outstanding. And I thank you for all the people that are in the cloud of witnesses up there in heaven, God, even mm -hmm. including grandpa. I just absolutely know yeah. that every time she steps on and talks about the real deal that he's looking down at her being like, there you go, Rachie. So mm -hmm. um, I thank you for his, I thank you for his love and his legacy and his impact on our entire family. Um, mm -hmm. We miss him every day, but we just know that he's yeah. just so excited to, to be up there with you. So um, thank you for the real deal. Thank you for family and friends and people that encourage us. And I pray that whatever we're doing after uh, this podcast ends today, whether it's at the end of the night and they're going to sleep or if they're just waking up and getting started with their day, that it would be a blessed one. And we thank you. Yes. For in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. God, I just thank you for this time together today. I thank you for grace. I thank you for the way you fashioned her and formed her. I thank you for the things that you put inside of her, the investment that you've placed into her that is gold. God, I pray that you'd put her in contact with people. I pray over her connections. I pray over her networking. I pray over her modeling. I pray over her career. I pray over her future. I pray over her uh, future husband, her children, her grandchildren, her great grandchildren. God, I just bless her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, God. And I, I thank you for who she is and the marvelous masterpiece, your poem, your workmanship that she is. I'm grateful, God, for the way that she tells a story of your goodness so easily. I thank you for the hard times in our relationship. I thank you that you're redeeming and restoring the years the locusts have eaten. I thank you for what you intend for grace, that it's always good to give her a future and a hope. So I'm so grateful, God, that you and your sovereignty would allow me to be your mom. And that gets me choked up, but I'm really, really grateful. So thank you for this great <laughs> gift and such a sweet daughter. So grateful. Whatever she does today, whatever she finds herself doing in the next uh, near future, God, I thank you that you watch over her and that You've got your angels around her. And that's the same for every real dealer, that you would just bless our coming and going now and forevermore, mm -hmm. that you'd bless us wherever we are. I pray that you'd be free to be whoever you are. I pray a blessing mm -hmm. over grace to be her. And I pray every real dealer that you would just celebrate your significance. You would know that God made you and you would freely be who God's made you to be. Ask Holy Spirit to direct your path. And I just bless mm -hmm. your path. I cheerlead who you are and what you're doing and the impact that you're making on the earth. You have been chosen for a time and a season to be in alive in this day and age. So I bless you. And I want to close the way my dad prayed years ago. Lord, we ask for all the people listening. We ask that you would help us to be the best we can be. And we'll thank you mm. in Christ's thank name. You for it. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ani.
We Thanks for our coffee and conversation. Part two coming Thank you. soon. <laughs> hey, you guys can um, look Grace up on her YouTube channel. You can look her up on Instagram. You can look me up. You can send us a DM that says, hey, I watched and I would enjoy yes. a conversation yes. about X, Y, or Z. You can give us ideas. Um, if we have nothing to say on it, we will steer away from it. But if we have a topic or that can be something that comes back and forth, uh, we will talk about it. And yeah. Anyway. All right. Bless you. Love you. Love, Love you. you, honey. Bye. End recording. You've been listening to The Real Deal with me, Rachel Inouye, helping people celebrate their significance and the genius of God in them. Audio engineering by my husband, Michael Inouye. Thanks, babe. Theme music by Andrew Grace.